so I've made some situations for myself. Situation one. Uh, the finish on this is looking good already. This is just the second flood coat of shellac on there. there we go. And uh, looking good. I'm going to uh, polish this down. I'm going to sand it down to level it and then start the French polish process, which I might talk about or not. Um, but the place I find myself is the following. This has a great color story to it, right? We have our fingerboard that's going to look like that. Our tailpiece that we've already looked at right here. Um, with all the natural tones of everything going on, uh, the tailpiece looks not satisfactory. We'll just say it that way. So the tailpiece right here has that Sitka rose on it. And it looks like the flower, but because of all of this red color and the dark color, you lose that. And because there's no other color in the um, instrument, you kind of lose the quality of that flower. So I'm going to take it off. Um, I can always put one back on. It takes some effort and stuff, but I'd rather be happy with it. So I think what I'd like to do is I'm going to scrape this off and show you the white underneath in relationship to the iron bark. And I might just interpret it as a drawing, do it as a black, there we go, sorry about that. Do it as a black and white drawing, which may relate to some of the other black elements that are going to be in here. So let me scratch this off or scrape it off and I'll show you what it looks like. So there's our inlaid maple piece that's underneath that image. Uh, I like that a lot better already. I think I'm going to try and interpret that as the Sitka Rose. I'll redraw on top of it in black and we'll see where it gets us. All right, slightly different direction than you're used to seeing here. Um, I have my light above my bench so that I can see reflective qualities on the instrument versus the light that you see for filming these videos. Um, but I want to show you kind of one bodying session of French polish. And what it is, is, and you'll see my head cut out here in a second, um, it is a wad of cheesecloth uh, or linen mixed in there. And it is it has inside of it denatured alcohol and purified shellac, a blonde, super blonde shellac that I use that I actually grind up uh, and make my own. And then I wrap that, what they call a rubber, right, that little wadding in a different outer fabric and that makes our real kind of rubber. It is a cloth like that, right? It's a pad and so I can actually hold it and squeeze it and get a little bit of shellac out. So I've just that loaded up with some shellac and denatured alcohol um, and then what I will do, add just a little more alcohol and I take a little bit of oil to lubricate the surface. Now eventually the oil comes off. Um, so we'll see where we are here. I mean, this is already getting kind of shiny. Okay, I've been doing a couple of these here. So I put a couple of dots of oil and I'm going to quickly move the pad over the surface and I'm depositing a very, very thin layer of shellac. So I'm smoothing it out over the whole thing. And I'll repeat this for about 10 to 15 minutes total, recharging my pad when I need to if it gets dry, and re-oiling it if it starts to, to stick in any way. Okay. So I'll just keep working my way over this surface with overlapping strokes. And then as the alcohol is running out, I slowly start adding pressure and that smooths together any inconsistent strokes in my process here. Okay. Do a little figure eights over it. Anything else? So that'll be the back. One little coat. So I'll do a session like that and then let it cure for a couple hours and actually shrinks it down and hardens completely because it'll dry in just a minute or so, 
but it'll be totally hard in a few hours, and then I can come back and do another session on it. So I've already done a few sessions. Look at that. That's totally dry. Okay, so you see my nice reflection in there. Um, but I'll get the back done up. There's the front, and obviously the sides. So the neck is a little different. I'll be working primarily on the head. The actual neck where you handle it, you don't want it to be super, super heavy glossy. Um, normally it's actually just raw wood, um, but I don't like that, the look of it, unless it's a fiddle. If it's a traditional fiddle or a traditional violin, I'll do that. But on ones that have good color and have some sort of like, you know, great inlay and kind of visual flow, I don't want to interrupt that with a two-tone two -tone neck. But on a traditional one that's like dyed kind of dark or stained dark, or varnish dark, um, it looks nice. So, I'll work my way around the whole instrument. It's also why I have this little block glued onto the front where the fingerboard will eventually be. That's what I can hold, right? Because when you're doing this with a normal varnish, I would actually hold where you'd be playing because there's nothing there. Gosh, this is looking good. Okay, so this is how I'm spending my hours over the next week or so is I'll be doing a session in the morning and a session in the evening, letting it cure in between, <clears throat> excuse me, and slowly building up a beautiful, durable finish for this violin. So I'll be busy doing this, and once this is all done and dry, we'll install our saddle and start getting our setup so we can hear what she sounds like. Let's talk about a couple things. This is looking fantastic. You can see the finish on there is like a glass case. So super reflective right now, super smooth. There's nothing on it. Um, so this is just the hard finish. So I got maybe one or two more final sessions left on this. Um, and then I can buff it down to the final finish that I want. If I want to leave the back a little glossier than the front or whatever, I can do so. Um, but this is looking good. So I got a couple more uh, sessions, like I said, on this and make sure there's no spots that I'm missing. And then, <clears throat> start about the tailpiece. Um, I was not happy with the color and I kept hinging on that color being there. So I took it off. My wife, who is an, is an awesome artist. I think I find that little piece of paper. Man, if y'all knew the condition of my bench in my life right now, whew, wherever it is. <clears throat> uh, she took the little Sitka rose, little flower right there, right? And, uh, and kind of did a miniature illustration of it, <clears throat> simplified it for me, because that's just not how my brain works. And so uh, I then took that and put it in there. So that is our Sitka tailpiece, which I think looks so much more natural and better. Um, just using actually some scorching techniques, I made a little tool to make a little circle uh, to kind of emphasize the inside. But I really dig it. I think it m matches so much better on the instrument that you can already see it from there, that natural color not having the um, pigment, like that fuchsia color on there. Um, not to say it cheapened it, but I think it distracted from the natural beauty of the woods. So this more enhances it. So it's no longer a star or like a focal point, but more a supporting actor to the, uh, to the woods. So, um, have our tailpiece with our little gut put in there so I can hold it while I finish it. Okay. So I'll work on these last coats of finish and then we get to cut the saddle right there. Um, and start doing some setup. Exciting stuff. All right, we're almost there. You can actually see my uh, umbrella light in the reflection there. Um, yeah, it's looking really sharp. Looking really wet, even though it's not. Um, but we're gonna take a second to talk about pegs. And so one of the things I need to do is I need to ream out the peg box, the holes here, with a violin reamer. Uh, these comes in all different types and shapes. Um, some of them are spiral cut, some of them are flute cut, um, straight cut, 
And uh, the whole role of them though is that you have the matching taper, the angle of this is the same as the angle of our pegs. Now, one thing I do that I was taught by my mentor is I actually turn down, even though these look, these look tiny, I turn down these pegs just a little smaller and tune them back up and get them all smooth for a really cool purpose. And that is that as this instrument wears, when someone plays it over and over and over and over and they tune it over and over and over, these pegs will are very, very hard and they can wear the maple, or in this case our mountain ash, it'll wear that wood away. And to where slowly these pegs sink further and further in. Uh, at that point, you have to do two things. One, you have to get new pegs oftentimes. Um, but the worst of it is if you get slightly, um, you get the wear and tear in here to where these will no longer accept pegs and you have to actually patch the holes and put in new ones, right? So they cut a square, fit it in there, drill a new hole, put a new peg. Well, my mentor, I don't know where he got it from, whether it's from his mentor, Mike Huckabee, or someone else, or if it's just a fiddle tradition, um, what we do is we turn these down slightly smaller so that as these wear through the peg box over the life of the instrument, now I can take this and throw it away, get a new peg, and it should fit longer and make the head of the instrument last longer before it needs to be refinished. So thinking beyond my lifetime and beyond the lifetime of everyone watching this, um, if this is still around, I want to provide that ability for someone um, so that they don't have to redo a lot of work. Uh, so, turn down my pegs. I have my reamer here, and this does two things. It's going to cut the finish out that's in there, but mainly it's going to cut the wood out. And you take light, light passes until our pegs start to fit. Check that out. So right now it's really just inside the peg box, right? It's just starting that taper, but you can tell it's a tight fit. Okay, uh, and so I'm gonna actually work my way through all the way across, just like this. <sighs> Until all the pegs, so that one's almost across, We'll get them till they're just buttoning out on the other side, right? And then I can trim that off uh, and get final depth on all the holes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, work my way through this. And um, the cool thing about violins, they obviously, they stagger. So I gotta cut one on one side, one on the other, one on the other, one on the other. Uh, unlike a banjo or whatever that has all of them on the same side. All right, so uh, let me get to Riemann and getting this, uh, these pegs that I think are gonna look lovely. Uh, put in place. All right, exciting part. I've got the French polish done. <clears throat> I need to put in the nut and the uh, the saddle. And so I know that the saddle is 40 millimeters wide. So I have to go out 20 out of either side here. Mark that. Okay. I'm just going 20 millimeters off the center line. Okay. So now I'll chop this out. And to do that, all I'm going to do is support it from the underside and slowly cut through the spruce in a little V, just like that. Okay. I'll do this on both sides and then trim out the middle.
there's our saddle in place. Now I need to fit it so it's not hanging over or doing anything weird. Okay, so we'll get this tailored fit in there and then move on to uh, our next steps, man. It's getting close, lots of little bits coming up soon. The fingerboard is put in place permanently. There she is. And this is looking like a proper violin. I've got my pegs set and ready to go. Uh, I do have to clip the ends off here and round them and dress them and drill the holes so the pegs aren't done, obviously. But um, the next thing I want to do right now while I have it sitting here is to set the sound post. And this is one of my least favorite parts of things to do. To me, it's very stressful. To a lot of people, it's not. <clears throat> but you take a thin piece of high quality spruce and this sound post connects the top to the back to let the sound travel, right? But um, what it also does is it adjusts the sound of the top. So if you move it further forward, you can change the pitch, or further back, you can adjust the pitch. But it serves as a companion to the bass bar that's inside of here to actually support the weight of the bridge in terms of the string pressure. So the bass bar supports it on the bass side, and the sound post supports it on the treble side. So, what I have to do is I use a set of specialized tools, which I'm most excited about sharing with you guys. How cool is this little thing? Okay, this is a little tool that fits inside the violin and it can measure the internal height where the sound post is supposed to go. So, it goes inside here, rotates, measures the inside, and you lock it in place, and then you'll pull it out, and that's how you know how tall to start carving on your sound post. Um, I also use a set tool, this little dude right here, that actually uh, can adjust and move the sound post when it's inside. Um, this is the most used tool, which is a little grabber, so that when you knock the sound post out of place, when you're trying to set it, you can grab it and pull it out or change it. That's what I use the most because it never works for me the first time. I have a friend of mine that's like, boop, and it's done. Uh, but this holds the uh, sound post in place while you set it in. This is historically where I am the worst because I will get it cut, get it tailored, set it in, and right before it does, it just knocks off the little thing. Because you have to be able to set it in place gently and then remove the little holder uh, that stabs into this, the sound post. So I'll poke this into the wood, stick it in place and remove this and then adjust it gently. Uh, and then knock it out of place a few times and finally set it. So, uh, <clears throat> I'll get to cutting and measuring this and we'll set it in place. All right, one of my favorite views to look at is actually through the in-pin hole. Now this is not a perspective I can like push into the camera and you can see it really well, doesn't work that way, but you can get a decent one with your cell phone. So I'll throw that picture up here so you can see it um, notice you can see the glow of the wood, right, as it's like so thin with the lights. Um, it's a really beautiful kind of internal perspective or architecture uh, of the instrument. Uh, but the sound post is missing, right, I haven't put it in yet. So let's put the sound post in and then we can see another picture after of where the sound post sits. Um, stressful part. I'll try this on camera. If it doesn't work the first couple times, I'll just put some good music on and do it that way. Alright, we got it really stuck. Give it our shot here. Oh, always falls off. Even when I think it's really stuck on there. There's got to be a better way to do this. They make like a cool, crazy system with magnets, but it's really expensive and kind of uh, overdone. And I dropped it. And it's too tall. So let me get it out. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm not an expert at putting in sound posts, which has never been my thing, but I am an expert at getting sound posts out because I do that a lot. Okay, let me sit this in here and then we'll check in with you all. All right, sound post is set. Third time. Not bad. That's really not bad. Uh, I'm really happy with that. So, I'll put up a picture here of the sound post in its place. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and you can see it through that little hole. It's difficult to kind of photograph that. I wish I had a cool lens. There's a couple artists that have cool lenses that actually can go inside that hole to like photograph the inside of an instrument.
but they're thousands and thousands of dollars and I don't have that. So um, our next step, once our sound post is set up and ready to go, is to actually tailor the bridge. So here is the little bridge blank, okay? I'm gonna tailor the feet and carve those and make them match the arch of our instrument and then set the height of it and the thickness. So I'll spend some time doing that. Um, yeah, and then we should be able to get strings on it soon. So that'd be exciting. All right, let me get back to work. Okay. So I have this set up in a little jig that I've made that rolls. <clears throat> so I can actually roll it on the instrument and make sure it's uh, set in the right spot. So I take the majority of the meat of the feet off and then I can actually roll it here. And I can see it in the frame a little bit. I'll roll it back and forth with a piece of sandpaper to see the high spots where it needs to come off. And once I get the feet set, We'll start working on the actual shape of the, of the bridge. All right, hope you're having a good morning. <clears throat> it's a good one for me, except I still have some sort of like uh, thing that's making my voice weird. But I have our, I have a mountain ash burl that Marcel and Zach and Connie sent me for this project, and that's what I'm gonna use as my chin rest. So I cut off a little piece, um, and I'm gonna make a chin rest, all right, like that. Uh, out of it. I think it's going to be nice because we have the mountain ash back, so the colors are going to match really nicely to the front. Um, <clears throat> so, doing that, worked on tailoring the bridge. It's getting really nice, getting close. Uh, I'm also working on the pegs. Now, each of these pegs is for a specific hole, specific string. Uh, once you sink them in, so that's why I have tape on them, they're labeled, but I'm going to dome over these little button tops so that they sit in there really nicely and neatly. Um, and they look elegant and then crisp as they kind of push their way through. So I'm working on those, um, but we're very close to stringing it up. Once I get those things, well, I'm kind of in a hurry, I feel like, in my brain, uh, but I'm going to really work on getting the pegs done up. That way I can put strings on it even before I'm done with the chin rest. Um, but the exciting news is, uh, my friend of mine, uh, Sila Darville, she is a professor at uh, Eastern Kentucky University. She's a violin professor and violist. She's amazing. She's the one that uh, worked with me to do the Knitted and Drawn video. If you haven't seen that, um, I'll try and put a link in the comments or the thing below, whatever this episode is. Um, it's where I, I made a violin around two skeins of yarn and then the yarn was pulled out for the first time as it was played for the first time by her. To me, it's a wonderful video. I really enjoyed that experience with her. But she's agreed to come play it, and that's in two weeks, um, or a week and a half, two weeks. Two weeks. Um, and so just with her scheduling. So I gotta have this all done up, wrapped up, and hopefully all the videos edited um, by then so that it can kind of seamlessly wrap up um, as quick as I can. So uh, I'm gonna get to work on that, uh, on the pegs, and then we'll get the bridge totally finished up. The bridge just needs a lot of sanding. Uh, and some branding. So here it is. I've relieved some of the weight around the eyes and under here, cleaned it all up. Um, I've got my arch nice and neat in there. Um, but it just needs a lot of filing and sanding to smooth up any rough areas. You just want sound to travel through this as cleanly as possible. So we'll get that set up. Uh, it's pretty nice and thin too. And that little fellow will sit there. Which way are you going? Yeah. The neck's sitting off. There you go. So that's going to sit there. All right, peg time. Man, my ADHD is kicking in and it's just like 6.30. All right, so a little progress check here. Here's our chin rest out of ebony. And here's our new one out of, there we go, out of our burl. This is going to be stunning. It's nice and lightweight. Um, it's going to sit well, I think. Testing without a violin is kind of weird. Um, but the one thing I do have to do, I got to make a weird little cork um, profile here. I have to do this on almost all my instruments because I like a little more dramatic curve, this little recurve right here. 
all right? And that's where the chin rest is gonna sit. And a traditional one fits like that and ends up leaning in or pinching just on the edge. So I end up adding a piece of cork right here and sculpting it to match that little area. So another thing is the to-do list. Now, this is the thing about instruments that's really weird is you think that you're really far along and you think that you're close to done because it looks almost done. But it's a little bit like building a house, um, that all the details and all the finishes at the end account for a majority of the time, um, especially fine finishes. So, uh, yes, we have the violin almost ready. Yes, I should get strings on it soon, but it's got lots of little details left. So, we've got lots of work to do still. Um, yeah, but I think this thing is coming out. This is a little more complex shape than I realized. You can see it's all wavy, right? Curves in, curves back, has a spot for the tailpiece. Ooh, tailpiece. Uh, it's over there. But yeah, make sure that misses the tailpiece. Oh, it's gonna look sharp. Okay, well let me get to sanding and scraping this one, um, and we'll catch you up in a bit. All right, peg's starting to get done. Look how lovely that is. Nice little dot, looks just like one of these, all right? So once it's in place, it'll have a nice dome button sticking out, but not a lot. So that way, as this progresses forward, it'll still look nice. All right, thought I'd share. I got the weird shape, chin rest, all done up. Let's see what she looks like a little coat of oil on, because this stuff is gonna look awesome. There's that burl. That's gonna look fantastic. All right, let me finish sanding this thing up and fill in the pores, and then, oh gosh, I'm so happy with that. Then, we can wrap it all up. So cool. All right, doing some final touch-ups on the bridge. I got strings on it, which is super, super exciting. Um, but just fine-tuning the final string height of it. But I'm not gonna lie. I know, I think it sounds good, but I don't play very much. So, let me get this little guy fine-tuned in here. Then, we just gotta do the shoulder rest, or the chin rest, keep saying shoulder rest, chin rest. I gotta wrap that up, and then she'll be ready. So exciting. Okay, but all I'm doing is I'm finaling down the final height of this. Um, and doing some final little tune-ups. <sighs> All right. <laughs> 